Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video, I want to talk about travel cameras or travel camera setups. Usually when we talk about travel cameras, we refer to something like a super zoom compact camera or a super zoom lens that covers everything from wide angle to a relatively long telephoto lens. But that is not the only way to to do travel photography. I mean, I guess the presumption is that uh, a travel photographer wants to be ready to capture everything and anything, but not everyone is like that and there can be several different uh, setups for different purposes. And here are my five proposals uh, for different types of travel purposes. And feel free to fill in yours uh, down below once you've seen and heard what I propose here. Number one, maximum image quality, maximum reach and still relatively compact. And this would involve a full frame camera body. It doesn't matter which camera brand, but we want relatively high pixel count for this purpose. Let's say minimum 40 megapixels. Then we have a standard zoom from 24 to 105 millimeters, a 4 that covers pretty good range and still a 4 is plenty fast for most purposes on a full frame camera. Then we would have a telephoto zoom lens, something from 70 to 300 or 100 to 400. Those usually have a relatively fast maximum aperture like 5.6 or something and they are still quite compact and lightweight compared to those really long zoom lenses. And then we would have one prime lens, let's say a 50 f1.8 for those low light evening walks when you only want to carry your camera and one lens light setup for those low light, um, let's say personal moments. However, if you're willing to compromise with the image quality, then you can all, of course have, uh, let's say a micro four thirds camera body and uh, similar reach in a very, very compact uh, uh, size and weight. And that is the way to go if you don't want the maximum image quality. But some people want that maximum image quality, some people don't. But that would be my proposal for uh, maximum reach or relatively good reach and relatively good image quality in compact size. Number two, a two prime setup. Not everyone is a zoom photographer. One such photographer is right here. And for those, we have a two prime setup, a classic setup that used to be like uh, the standard setup for many back in the day before zoom lenses became popular. My preferred setup at the moment, today pro would probably be a 28 millimeter prime lens and a 50 millimeter prime lens for a full frame camera. But that could also be, let's say 24 and 50, uh, 35 and 85, for example, or even a 50 and uh, 100 millimeter. The idea is that you have one prime lens that is your sort of standard lens that is on most of the time, something like a 50 or a little bit wider that covers those usual moments. And then you have another lens which is a little bit narrower for those, let's say, portrait moments or those moments that uh, require a little bit narrower angle of view. And of course, uh, if you have a micro four thirds camera, then you'd have something like maybe 14 and 25 or something similar, depending on your preferences. Number three, a standard zoom setup. This is very similar to the previous two prime setup, except that this uh, involves a standard zoom lens. It can be either a 24 to 70 f 2.8 or 24, 205, f4 in full frame terms. But if you have a smaller camera, uh, let's say a micro four thirds camera, it could be say 12 to 60 millimeter zoom lens or whatever. And um, this covers pretty much the same similar range as the two prime setup, but this has the flexibility of the zoom lens and no need to 
uh, switch lenses regardless of the situation. So you'd have one lens that covers the basic range and uh, still a relatively fast maximum aperture, not as fast as with a prime lens, but it would probably cover most situations and if you have a stabilized camera, a stabilized lens, then you'd be good to go in many low light situations too. One uh, good and versatile compact simple setup. Number four is a wildlife safari setup. I have to say that I have little experience um, on that uh, topic. I've been only once on a wildlife safari but still this is what I suggest. I'd have two camera bodies, two not four, two. Um, it doesn't matter which sensor size or which brand and on another camera body I'd have a, a long super telephoto zoom lens. If I had a full frame camera body I'd have something like from, uh, from 200 to 600 and a teleconverter for that for those uh, super long reach moments. And on another camera body I'd have a standard zoom lens from 24 to 105 f4 and then I'd be ready to shoot a wide landscape shot and also a tight close-up of that lion's face for example. Never uh, need to or never have to switch lenses or anything. I'd be ready for anything that happens on that savanna and uh, I'd be ready to capture those super exciting wildlife uh, moments. And then I'd have one prime lens something like a 35 or 50 f 1.8 1.4 for those uh, evening moments, personal moments like uh, evening walk, dinner or whatever when I don't uh, have any use for those super long heavy zoom lenses and I'd be happy to carry just one camera and a simple setup. The size and price of this setup depends on your choice of camera body because that affects the size of the lenses and the, the price of the lenses probably too. But those are personal matters. Some people prefer full frame cameras and uh, the better image quality that is possible but some people prefer a compact micro four thirds setup because it is so compact and you can fit even that uh, super long reach almost in your pocket. Whatever is your choice. Number five is a street or a purist setup and in this setup I'd have a fixed prime lens compact camera like the Ricoh GR3 or 3X or one of the Fuji X100 series cameras or the Leica Q, whatever Q is uh, right for your budget. The idea is to have a simple and effective setup and uh, never have to worry about which lens to take and minimize the gear distraction and uh, have more attention to your photography. I know this is not for everyone but it is very simple and effective. You could also of course have a camera body and one single prime lens on that camera body that would do the same thing. But this is very let's say purist setup and like I said not for everyone but uh, some people really like it, me included and uh, it is simple and effective. And number six is a compact maximum reach setup. And in this setup I'd have a one inch sensor compact camera with a super zoom lens. There are not that many cameras um, available anymore, cameras like that. It's like a dying breed. But for example Sony still has their RX100 Mark 6 VI and 7 and those cameras cover everything from 24 to 200 millimeters in a pocket size format. There are other cameras also like the Panasonic TZ200, not sure if that is in production anymore, but that would cover everything from 24 to 360 millimeters. And then there's the Canon G5 Mark 
tool I think it covers everything from 24 to 120 millimeters also one inch sensor really nice camera those cameras offer a really good image quality from that one inch sensor but the downside is the quite slow maximum aperture especially at the telephoto end but in bright light you can get some amazing results with these cameras if you are willing to sacrifice a little bit of that low light capability so there you have it my suggestions my six suggestions for travel gear setups for different situations at the start of this video I said five suggestions but it seems like I had six anyway please do leave your possible suggestions down below I'd like to hear those two as always that's all I have for you today thank you so much for watching and joining in if you found this video useful or entertaining please do consider buying me a cup of coffee there's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland thank you and I'll definitely see you in the next video.